Hey guys, this is Ribonator here for The Fluff and Amazin, and I just thought I would uh, go ahead and introduce you guys to my new series, which is going to be Let's Make a Pokemon Game. Uh, I got a request to kind of go over some stuff that I do for my own Pokemon game, and I decided I would actually turn that into two series. One about working on my Pokemon game, which you see here, uh, is Pokemon Titans, and then one that I'm going to do to actually kind of go through a game step by step with you. I don't have a completed game, I have a good demo that goes up to uh, the fourth gym, and I hope people really like it, but uh, it, it is enjoyable that I think, and uh, I feel like I'm pretty good at showing what to do and what not to do for games, so figured I'd go ahead and do that for you guys. But we're definitely going to start step by step on how to stay a game or how to make a game so that you know everything there is. I haven't been editing in about two months or anything like that. So I'm kind of getting back into it just like you guys would. So it's a good way for us both to start. First and foremost, you need to have Poke or RPG Maker XP. I have that bound down here to my uh, hotbar just because or toolbar or whatever because I use it a lot for the editing you need that and you need to download Pokemon Essentials if you don't have Pokemon Essentials go get Pokemon Essentials uh, you can go to the wiki to get it and the next most important thing is add this to your freaking bookmarks man you're gonna use so much of it all the time to find little details that you need for your game how to uh, edit your attacks this that and the other which I've gone over one of those in a tutorial before but you just need to have this place saved to your bookmarks because you will come back here all the time. So just wanted that to be uh, first and foremost something that you guys know. You will need that wiki. Definitely make sure you go get it. So like I said, we're going to go through everything so you kind of get familiar with the interface and stuff like that. And I have to remember where some of it is because I haven't done it in a while. So I'm going to just kind of go over a few things. We'll get started and then we'll make our own first little map and that'll be what we do on this first episode. So, first and foremost, obviously, uh, you want to come up here and go to New Project or Open Project. And at wherever you downloaded your Pokemon uh, Essentials, that will be uh, called Game in here. And you'll open it up. Mine's called Pokemon Titans because I wanted to rename it for mine. makes me feel better. Uh, and it'll have this whole section over here. Not Gaysa Region, but it'll have Demo with everything kind of in here for you to learn how to make the game and with a bunch of examples in there for you. This is your best friend. Uh, aside from the wiki, this is where you learn everything about the game. So it's got little fake Mart towns, so everything that you can learn about that. It's got a fake gym, so you can just learn how to do all this stuff on your own. And a lot of it you can actually just copy-paste, and it works perfectly fine for yours because a lot of them are just trainers that you need to edit one thing or the other on it, rename it, this, that, and the other, and you're good to go. Sorry, my mouse was kind of messed up there. But anywho, that's uh, what comes with your Pokemon uh, Essentials. It will also come with a graphics folder filled with Pokemon. You want to make sure you put that in there. Uh, I messed up on mine, and that's why mine didn't look so good for a long time. But this is my game. Uh, the Gesa region is where Pokemon Titans uh, takes place. Here's all this different stuff that I've made, yada yada. This my portfolio. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start making a game with you guys so that you can see what to do. This is kind of my test map where I learned how to do a lot of things. It does come with the game, and uh, you can figure it out from there. But anyhow, so you want to open up that game, uh, and then you can just come over here and do a bunch of stuff. But we're going to go over the toolbar a little bit. Over here is open project, save project, all the good stuff, copy, delete, anyhow. And then uh, here's all your layers for your design. Now what these do is when you're designing something, say like this forest here, all this grass... Uh, it's kind of like Photoshop. You want to make sure it's on layer one because you have to have a nice foundation. So this stuff is grass. You see, I don't want that there, so I'm going to control Z, get rid of that. Uh, I just kind of wanted to show you as just a baseline. You want to lay down grass. You have to have some sort of floor. You can't just have a black space. I mean, you can, but nobody wants a black space. And you can also lay down like trees and stuff like that, the basis of trees, uh, if it fits with grass. If you don't want to lay down trees on grass, say I want to make this little section here. I want it to just be this concrete area. And you want trees to be on top of that. Well, anything that's over here in this section, which uh, is going to be your graphics folder for each area, that has white in the background, is going to be able to be placed on layer 2 or 3. You can place them on layer 1, but you're going to see a white background because there's nothing there behind it. What the white background means is that whatever is behind it, you will see. So, for instance, I'm going to place this tree here. Notice you can still see bits of the uh, concrete behind it. That's because it's on a layer two. If it were on layer one, like, let's go ahead and show you here. If it were on layer one, you would replace it, and now there's a white space with a tree. You don't want that. So you can place it on layer two. You can actually place the whole thing on layer two. But if you want to have uh, extra 
settings like that, you can place it on layer three to where it can go on top of other trees. That way they look kind of more natural like this. I generally like to place on layer two, the bottom parts of trees, and then I go to layer three for the top parts. It makes it easier for you to recognize that, uh, hey, I need to be able to walk behind that. It just kind of keeps your game more organized. So anything on layer three doesn't necessarily mean you can walk behind it, but some things have properties for that. So just kind of giving you an example of what happens on layer one, two, and three. You want your base foundation. You want your houses, structures, and things like that. And maybe bridges, stuff that you can walk on, behind, and over. You want all that on layer three. Now we're going to go to the event finder or button. What that does is that sets up events, like finding a Pokeball on the ground, a trainer that can talk to you or battle you. Those are events that you need. If you don't know what a lot of coding, you will learn a lot of cold of coding by uh, working with this program. It doesn't necessarily mean you will learn code, but you'll learn the logic behind code. And that's definitely a big thing for events. So say I wanted to move that Pokeball there, you can do that. This Pokeball is now an event. An event will show everything that the player would see based on a grid section here. This grid section is your design area and it's what you'll be working with. So this is a pretty big map, but right here is where just a pre-made selection has been made so that we can kind of test some things out. So this is a Pokeball event. I'm not going to get too in-depth on two events. I just kind of want you to get familiar with what they are on this first tutorial. So this event contains a Pokeball caught by the professor, yada yada. You don't need to know any specifics. You just need to know this is an event. So if your player were to go up to it, it can interact with it more than just that's a tree. It doesn't do anything other than walking up to it. This is all drawing stuff. You won't need that too much unless you're trying to uh, edit on these other layers like this. I recommend keeping your tool on rectangle. If you keep it on rectangle, it develops good habits and you'll be able to edit a lot faster than if you were to keep it on just the, excuse me, drawing tool. If you do it on the drawing tool, you can only place one brick or the entire thing at one time. The rectangle, if I wanted to place multiple trees, I can do that. <laughs> I'm not going to, but you can. Uh, I just don't generally recommend the circle unless you're trying to make some sort of natural looking water pattern. I just don't do it. The flood fill uh, is a great way to start uh, your baseline for setting up your grass and stuff like that because it'll fill everything automatically for you, which is really nice. But generally, we're going to use the rectangle tool. You can also zoom out up to one-fourth the size and then the one-to-one -one regular scale. I generally work with these two. One-fourth is a little too broad for me, but uh, it is nice to look at world maps and stuff like that. So then we also have your database here. Uh, this will have all your tile sets for your game. So anything that you upload, like uh, you might find some custom ones that you like, but it will also come with these pre-made ones, all these rocks, features, just all the general stuff for a uh, Pokemon game. The inside of a Pokemon Center, dungeons, all that stuff, that's going to be located here. This is really all you care about on the uh, this database section. There are a few other things, but nothing that we need to get into right now. Animations, maybe eventually, but the one that's in the game is a lot easier to use. So all you need to know, database is tile sets. Uh, nothing to do with that yet. We'll get to that eventually. This is the materials. Uh, it's just all your graphics and animations and sounds and background music and stuff like that. Don't worry about it yet. Script editor. Definitely don't worry about this unless you have a specific reason to. This, uh, I will go over those in later tutorials, but there's no reason to get to it right now. Sound test, it's always good. You can try out different background music, like this is a background sound. That's a door opening. Oh yeah, and it won't stop unless you hit stop, so be sure you do that, because sometimes you'll play your background music forever. Anywho, so you can also play test your game here. That's always great. It does take a little bit of time to do, so I'm going to go ahead and play test mine so you see what that's like. This is uh, me playing Pokemon Titans. It's where I stopped off on my tutorial for the game. So running around in the game, this is basically what you can create with your uh, Pokemon RPG Maker. Now I edited my trainer sprite so that he has uh, white clothes rather than red or blue because that's what I prefer. And you can also edit events like these where this light will give you a shadow on your character, anything like that. Events that let you go into this Pokemon Center. will travel you to other ones. This is all just stuff that we'll go over in later tutorials and I hope that you're looking forward to those. So now let's actually get down to it. This will kind of be a long tutorial. Uh, I could split it up, but I'm probably going to leave it all in one. Uh, I'd prefer long tutorials rather than a bunch of different short ones. I'll cover one topic in depth, and that's what we'll do. So next we're going to go to new map down here because we're going to call this one uh, tut or real 
land because this is what we're going to make together as a game. You can follow me step by step, but I kind of want you to take your own uh, edge to it, you know, uh, your own kind of scene and just make your own game with me. That way you can learn everything that you need to learn. But we're going to call this tutorial land or we'll call it tutorial region. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to use the outside tile set. Uh, you want to set a base width and height for your map. I'm only going to set 40 because we're going to do a starting town first. Uh, actually, this region probably wouldn't even be uh, necessary. This is just a region. So we'll, we'll anyway, uh, I'm just kind of talking to myself. You want to change your auto background music uh, to whatever you want the background sound to be. I have a bunch of different uh, kind of poppy songs that I imported as MIDI files, which is the type of music that you can use. I have a bunch of different ones of them that fit because I really like all these. I like custom music in my game. But you can pick whichever one you want. So, like, let's see. Radio Oak. We can do that one, but we'll just pick some uh, bland one. Let's go with Field 1. There we go. Uh, that sounds pretty good to me. You can adjust the pitch. All that good junk. Whatever you want to do. That actually sounds pretty happy. That's a good tutorial start. So anytime you come into this area, it will automatically change the background music of your game to that song. So that's what we want. Now we've got the tutorial region. I'm going to go ahead and try and move it out of my game because right now it's set as if it was inside my specific Gesa region game. So I'm going to... No, that's... All right, give me one second. We're going to try and drag it out of here. This is actually good for me to uh, test because I wouldn't have known this otherwise, so... Boom. Okay, so now let's get out of... Okay, so now it's its own little section. Tutorial region. From there, I'm going to go ahead and make a new map, and we'll call it Star Tar Town. <laughs> I'm not great with coming up with fake dumb names, so this is just going to be our starter town. We'll actually make it 40 by 40. We don't want to make it too big. It's just something that we can work with right off the bat. Auto change background music. Field 4 was pretty good. All right, we'll go with that. So now here is where we're going to start. We'll start on layer one. Uh, everything right here is just going to be a blank white page. And we're going to automatically fill it up with random grass. Because our starter town is going to be in the forest like every other starting town in Pokemon has ever been. So we got that base layer filled up with this. Uh, and it's also got that starting music to it. Now everybody knows base towns need a house. So we're going to scroll down in this tile set. Go down here, find a little house, and we're going to place that in here. But one thing I do want to add is if you don't set a setting uh, within the game so that you can't go past these edges, you will see just blank black space in here. I'll go over that at a later time, but right now we're just going to work, uh, focus on the town. The other thing about the towns is don't make your towns bland. Don't be dumb. Don't just have a square town, house here, house here, and an exit. That's no fun. Nobody likes doing that. It doesn't look fun. It's just... Eh, I don't really care for it. Nobody else does. So let's pick a nice little house. Um, our little family's going to be pretty well off. Actually, you know what? We're not even going to start with a house. We're going to go even more basic than that. Let's go ahead and get some trees up in here. And actually, let's just go with this tree. So we are going to go all the way to at least here. And oh, all right. So this is the other part why we have layer three things. So we're going to cover that part of the town there, that part of the town, that part of the town. I know I just said no squares or anything like that, but you'll see what we're going to do with this to make it a little bit better. So that's all good there. That's all good there. Now we're going to go to layer three. And let's see here. That's not what I wanted. I wanted like that. Okay, so we can drag that down and it'll all look like they have little big happy treetops. Oop, we need to go right there. So let's drag that across here. We don't need to show it up there because I'm going to make it later so you can't see that at all. Oop, uh, I dragged that in the wrong spot, dragged that in the wrong spot. There we go. Okay, so now all these trees have tree chops. You can go check on your uh, event layer to see what it would look like in game. So this is cool for us. This is what we care about. Now we're going to add a little bit more detail to it. Uh, obviously this doesn't look great like at all, but uh, it's just kind of what we're working with to show you a baseline for the town. So add a little bit more of these trees here, maybe a little something like this, a little somewhere for these trees to go, um, something like that. We just don't want it to look too man-made, you know what I mean? 
a little bit natural up in here. I know it's kind of road, but men make rows of trees. All right, so now we'll go on to layer three, pick up some of these, add some tops to the trees. This is kind of like an intro design tutorial as well. I mean, this doesn't look great. I wouldn't put this in my game, but uh, it, it, it we're just kind of showing you kind of the base idea of what to do. So now we've got a bunch of different trees. Cool, we got a little starting area. Let's go ahead and add some houses. And do do do. Let's add. Like I said, our family is going to be pretty decently well off to start. So we're on the layer two, and here is where we can add our house. And over here, we'll add the Pokemon lab. Uh, what's the lab going to look like? <coughs> uh, excuse me. I know there's specific houses for it and stuff like that. Yeah, there, there it is. Actually, I don't have to hunt too far. So this one, I think, is actually the Pokemon lab. There we go. <coughs> Sorry about that. We're going to start right next to the professor like every good Pokemon game does. Mine actually, actually, no, yeah, my Pokemon Titan game does that as well. So now this is what our town looks like so far. Nothing fancy, but we don't really care about anything fancy. I'm just kind of showing you guys what to do, how to place stuff. Now, if you want uh, places for wild Pokemon to spawn, you can obviously put grass here and there. I'm not going to put any grass because it's a starting zone. We don't want that. Uh, I'll put grass later, but you kind of want to be able to force your character into getting a Pokemon first. But anywho, uh, you can put little flowers, this side and the other. It really just lightens up your game by uh, making it look like, oh, this is all really part of the landscape, and it just blends in well, this, that, and the other, right? So nothing that you particularly have to do. I just like little flowers in there that make things look nice. Uh, so that's basically the idea of what's going on here. I'm not going to bore you guys with looking at it anymore. You just want to build a town that doesn't look like, oh, this is a box. This is all you're allowed to go through. I'm going to fill this up outside of the, uh, I just pointed at the screen with my hand as if you guys could see it. Mm. I'm going to fill this screen up as if uh, this was a full town outside of recording so you guys aren't bored with that detail. But as you can see on mine, I decided to go with kind of a port look to mine. There's no real box area. There's tons of areas you can go, tons of people you can talk to, and you don't feel like you're forced into just going in one single, oh, I'm out of my house, let's go straight up, straight down. That's no fun. So we'll finish this up uh, on our own sometime, and we'll start back on the next tutorial. This tutorial just kind of covered these base buttons and the general idea of starting a map. So next tutorial, uh, we'll see what we get into. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you want to see in some tutorials. I'll try and order them how I would order a game, but I will also take your input and try and uh, work with that as well if you want to see how to make custom Pokemon, this, that, and the other. I'll definitely get to that eventually when I have time. So uh, be glad to do whatever you guys want me to do, and I uh, hope you guys really enjoy this. So this is Rivenator for The Fluff and Amazing, and we'll see you.